Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, today's message is titled, The Timing of the Rapture and Revealing of the Antichrist. Folks, I'm doing this video because many of you have asked me to. I've done several videos on both of these topics before, but because of all the deception going on out there right now, and people making videos saying that there is no such thing as the rapture, or that certain things need to happen before the rapture, I'm noticing a massive increase in confusion. I'm seeing it all over my emails and comments. And we know who the author of confusion is. So I wanted to do a video covering both of these topics, referring to the timing of the rapture and the revealing of the Antichrist. I wanted to do a video covering both of these topics into one video. Please share this video because there is a lot of people confused out there and discouraged. We need to go to the ultimate source of truth on these two topics. So that's what we will do in this video. Don't listen to what I'm saying or what anyone else says. You have to go to the Word of God. And that's what we will do in this video. First, those of you out there are confused because you're seeing so many people saying that the rapture is not in the Bible. That it's made up and it won't happen. Let's cover that first. So where is the rapture in the Bible? The first thing all of us have to realize is the rapture of the church and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are two separate events. In the rapture of the church, Jesus Christ comes for his saints. He calls us up. He catches us, catches us up to meet him in the air and takes us to heaven while the judgment of God is being poured out on humanity during the coming tribulation period. So Jesus Christ does not touch down on the Mount of Olives at the rapture. At the rapture of the church, he comes for his saints when he, when he calls us up to meet him in the, in the clouds. At the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come with Jesus when he actually physically touches down on the Mount of Olives to establish his 1,000-year millennial reign. So the rapture and the second coming are two separate events that must occur at least seven years apart. But let's go to the rapture. So if you're confused because people are telling you there's no such thing as the rapture, it's not in the Bible, we're going to talk about that first. Turn with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, the Apostle Paul records the following. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's go back up to verse 13 uh, there. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. What the Apostle Paul is referring to here is uh, which, referring to those which are asleep. This is referring to those that have died. Um, so when we die, if you're saved, your body goes into the ground right, to be absent uh, from the body is to be present with the Lord. So your body goes into the ground, but your spirit goes into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what Paul's referring to here, those that have, which are asleep, um, are those that have passed on, that have died in Christ. Then going down to verse 15 again, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive 
and remain, referring there will be a generation that will be alive when this event occurs, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself, this is referring to the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus is literally going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those that have died in Christ, again, their body goes into the ground. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Their body goes into the ground. Their spirit immediately goes into the presence of the Lord uh, in heaven. But at the when the rapture occurs, um, the bodies are going to, the dead in Christ have to rise first because they have to, um, they have to receive their glorified bodies. So their spirits come with Jesus at the rapture in the clouds. Their bodies must rise to meet their spirits in the air so they will receive their glorified bodies. So the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then the generation, which I believe we are that generation, that's going to be alive during this time. We which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So where is the rapture in this, Chad? Well, the Greek word from this term rapture is derived. It actually appears in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, which we just read. Translated, caught up. We shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet uh, the Lord in the air. The Latin translation of this verse used is the word rapturo. Uh, the Greek, that's where we get rapture from. The Greek word it translates is harpazo, which literally means to snatch or to take away. You can literally see right on the screen here uh, the Greek translation, Strong's 726, harpazo, which literally means to seize, to carry off by force, to seize on, to claim for oneself eagerly, to snatch out or away. It's a sudden plucking, it's a sudden pulling. In fact, in the New Testament, you will see 12 times where this word harapazo is actually used. You can see it right on the screen here. Pause it if you need to. Matthew 13, 19, catcheth away. John 6, 15, take him by force. John 10, 12, catcheth them. John 10, 28, pluck them. J John 10, 29, pluck them. Acts 8, 39, caught away. Acts 23, 10, uh, take him by force. 2 Corinthians 12, 2, caught up. 2 Corinthians 12, 4, he was caught up. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, which we just read, shall be caught up. Jude 1, 23, pulling them. Revelation 12, 5, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So harpazo, it's a sudden plucking away. It's a sudden, it's a sudden rescue. It's a sudden snatching. For those of you that have kids out there, I want you to think about this. If you see your kid on the train track and you see a full speed train coming, what are you going to do right before the train hits? You're going to suddenly rescue your child. You're going to suddenly pluck away, pull away, catcheth away by force your child off that train track uh, before the full speed train hits. Likewise, Jesus Christ is going to suddenly rescue those that are his, those that, those that are saved, those that are born again of the Spirit of God. He's going to suddenly rescue those, suddenly snatch away those that are his before the full speed train hits, known as the coming tribulation period. Next, I want you to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to read verses 50 to 53. The Apostle Paul again records the following. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These bodies that we are in, they are corrupted. These bodies cannot enter heaven. So at the rapture, the, uh, the generation that's going to be alive uh, to be raptured, which I believe we are that generation, we have to be changed. We cannot enter heaven in these bodies. So at the rapture, we shall not all sleep. So there is going to be a generation that will not physically die. All right. Uh, 
We shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Because remember, the dead in Christ have to rise first. So when you die, when you're in Christ, again, if you're saved when you die, your body goes into the ground. Uh, to be absent from the body is to be present uh, with the Lord. So your body goes into the ground, but your spirit immediately goes into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in heaven. But at the rapture, uh, the bodies have to rise to meet the spirits in the air because the dead in Christ, uh, they have to receive their glorified bodies. So they are going to rise first. And then we, which are alive and remain, when this event occurs, we are going to be instantly transformed into our glorified bodies. And we are going to be caught up, suddenly removed, snatched away suddenly to meet the Lord Jesus Christ in the air as he takes us with, takes us with him to heaven while the judgment of God is being poured out on humanity. I just shared with you two of the most popular passages in scripture talking about the rapture of the church. There's many more uh, typologies in the Old and New Testament uh, typologies of the rapture of the church. I encourage you to do your own research, but make no mistake about it. The rapture is there. And I look around this world right now at everything occurring, and I look at what my Bible says, I'm looking up each and every day because here's the reality. Nothing needs to happen before the rapture of the church. It's an event that is going to come upon this world as a snare. It's going to happen suddenly, and it could occur at any time. Many things need to happen before the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the rapture of the church is an event you need to be ready for, and you need to be ready for it now because it could happen today. We are watching every day on this channel. Next, let's talk about the revealing of the Antichrist because many people are saying, no, a lot of things need to happen before the rapture. The temple needs to be built. The Antichrist uh, needs to be revealed. So we're going to cover uh, the Antichrist next. The revealing of the Antichrist. Turn with me to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The Apostle Paul records, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're going to read verse 1 to 10 here. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that's the rapture, our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, that the day of, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So going to verse 3, right here, a lot of people say, Chad, right there it says, the man of sin has to be revealed first before that day. you got to read the whole chapter in context. But first, uh, except there come a falling away first. Now the falling away there translates to apostasia. Now I'm not going to get into a whole debate here on, I have my own opinion on what apostasia is referring to. Uh, whether it's a, uh, some people say, oh, this is a falling away from the truth, which is happening anyway right now, by the way. And some people uh, will translate it or they'll talk about the apostasy of referring to a physical departure. I'm not going to discuss that in this video. However, uh, the falling away from the truth is happening anyways. Uh, you have to read the whole chapter. If you're saying, see right there, Chad, it says that there has to be a falling away first and the man of sin has to be revealed. Let's keep reading. Read the whole chapter, not just verse three. Let's go to verse four. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth. There's something withholding the Antichrist here. What withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now... Let it, here's that again, something's restraining the Antichrist here. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then, verse 8, listen to this. And then, and then, and then shall that wicked be revealed. So the restrainer or whatever is withholding the Antichrist is going to be taken out of the way. And then that wicked's going to be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 
So people don't like to read 2 Thessalonians the entire uh, chapter 2, the entire chapter in context. Because very clearly, when you go down to verse 6, go down to verse 6 again. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth that he might re be revealed in his time. So something is restraining the Antichrist. With, something is withholding him. Uh, when you look at this, what withholdeth, when you actually go to uh, the Greek translation again, Strong 2722, you see this word pronounced, if I'm saying it right, uh, katako. And look at what it says here, what it means. To hold down, to hold back, to detain, to retain, from going away, to restrain, to hinder, that which hinders Antichrist from making his appearance. So not only do we see this katago, katako, excuse me, in verse 6 with uh, what withholdeth, but then when you go down to verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth, there it is again. So we see Strong's 2722, Catico, in verse 6 and in verse 7, he who now letteth, uh, to restrain, to hinder, to hold back, to hold down. So very clearly here, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is clear that the removal of the restrainer's influence precedes the revealing of the Antichrist, given free reign during the coming tribulation. The Holy Spirit within the church is the restrainer. The Holy Spirit of God is the only person with sufficient and supernatural power to do this restraining. Of course, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, works through believers to accomplish this. The church, indwelt by the Spirit of God, has always been part of what holds society back from the swelling tide of lawless living. At some point, Paul says the Spirit will step aside from his restraining work, allowing sin to have dominion over mankind. Folks, it's clear as day. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit inside the believers is restraining the Antichrist. But when the rapture occurs, when Jesus Christ comes and the dead in Christ rise first, and we which are alive and remain are going to be suddenly changed, and we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, he's going to rescue us and take us out of the way. When that restraining influence is taken out of the way, imagine the darkness that's going to befall this world once the light once those that have the indwelling Holy Spirit are taken out of the way, imagine the darkness that is going to come upon the earth after that event. Once we're taken out of the way, not only is this darkness going to come, it's already dark, but I'm talking about a whole other level of darkness once the restrainer is taken out of the way. And then that wicked one, and then the Antichrist is going to be revealed. It's clear as day in Scripture, in context, the rapture of the church is there. It will occur. Nothing needs to happen before the rapture of the church. It's an event we need to be ready for each and every day. It's going to come upon this world as a snare. It's going to rock this entire world. It's going to shake it to its core. But the rapture of the church is an event that it can occur suddenly. It's going to come upon this world as a snare. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will occur at the end of of the tribulation period when we come with Jesus and he touches down on the Mount of Olives to establish his 1,000 year millennial reign. So the rapture of the church is in the Bible and it tells you the timing of it. Uh, it will occur uh, before the wicked one is revealed. When we're taken out of the way, right? The restrainer is taken out of the way and then that wicked one is going to be revealed. As my prayer, this video has helped some of you out there because there's so much confusion, confusion and junk going on right there. Uh, going on out there right now. The blessed hope has become the blasted hope. I want you to be encouraged today, knowing that Jesus will come at the perfect appointed time one day soon. Could be today. We're watching every day on this channel. What do you have to do to make sure you're rapture ready? You need to be saved. And what do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you can never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. 
He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with them forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming. And he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.